Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Indiana University. Um, I'm Andy Hansen. I am the, uh, the chairman of the computer science department. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this uh, celebration in honor of Dan Friedman and his contributions to computer science on the occasion of his 60th birthday. Uh, Dan's friends, students, and colleagues have come from all over the world, I see, uh, to talk to us about the ideas that Dan has helped make a part of our intellectual life. The program begins immediately after I finish these introductory remarks and continues until 6 o'clock. Uh, it will be punctuated by uh, Guy Steele's keynote talk, which coincides with our departmental colloquium at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And tomorrow we begin again at 9 a.m for another full day of interesting talks with a, a luncheon at noon and a formal, a formal reception Saturday night uh, to conclude the festivities. Uh, before I go on to say a few words about Dan himself, I think we should uh, acknowledge the fantastic job of organization that has made this event a reality. We all owe a, a special debt of gratitude to Julia Lawal for organizing the program. <laughs> She's hiding in the back there. Uh, and, and to uh, our, uh, our local arrangements uh, handled by Jill Cowden and especially George Springer for getting everything organized. Let's give them a big hand. Uh, so uh, what, uh, <laughs> what can I say about, about Dan Friedman uh, that would not uh, be an understatement? Uh, is he's had a life of tumult and stability, a life of tragedy and joy. He's devoted to his family and his students and his colleagues and is relentless in his passion for intellectual growth and discovery. Dan has a mission to inspire all his pupils, his undergraduates, his, gra his graduate students and his colleagues alike with the beauty and the power of the structure of programs and programming languages that we know so well thanks to his efforts. Yet all this began long, long ago and far, far away when Dan grew up in a tiny town of 750 people in Connecticut where his father was a dentist Maybe that's where he learned what he needed to know to finally sink his teeth into skiing. <laughs> um, his life, <laughs> Dan's lifelong engagement with teaching began improbably when his high school math teacher had a heart attack and disappeared into the hospital, leaving Dan's own math class canceled. And Dan was put in charge with the rest of the math classes of the high school. So we all know Dan as a teacher. That's how it started. <laughs> he began by teaching the other math classes besides his own when his high school math teacher had a heart attack. And uh, uh, this is, was in a class, a graduating class from his high school of 55 students. So Dan graduated with his class of 55 students, began his undergraduate career at the University of Connecticut and dropped out of college. <laughs> so Dan, the college dropout, <laughs> uh, shows that there are many paths to what we're doing today and never give up. Uh, so eventually, he, he located Texas. And he, he, he <laughs> not too hard to find. Uh, resumed his education in Texas at the University of Houston, this time finishing his undergraduate education and started graduate school at the University of Texas in Austin in a strange new field, which didn't even exist really uh, until very near that time. Strange new field called computer science. The biologists and the mathematicians and the physicists sort of had problems with that word of science, but uh, the, the, the brave new world was already beginning. 
In between being invited to teach computer science courses for half the population of Texas, or so it seemed to Dan when he told me about it, uh, three courses per semester while doing your PhD, uh, <laughs> he managed, in fact, to finish both his master's and his PhD under Terry Pratt at UT Austin. And his master's thesis, which he tells me was the only thing he was asked to speak about when he came to interview for his job at Indiana, was entitled GRASP, Graph Processing, a Lisp Extension. And this work, as some of you may know, became well known in its own right. It ran on a CDC 6600, a machine near and dear to my heart since that was one of my own first machines using a Texas-style list with its own unique primitives, car, cutter, and kisser. I did not make this up, dance words, it's the truth. <laughs> a few years later, uh, in 1973, still in the midst of holding down a teaching job at the LBJ School of Public Affairs, right across the street from everything else happening at UT Austin, Dan continued his theme of reaching out to the world of graph processing with his PhD thesis, which was called GROPE, a graph processing language and its formal definition. I didn't pick these words. <laughs> I myself, to add my own little personal comment here, was drawn into Dan's work without even knowing it. Because long before I ever heard of Dan Friedman or even Indiana University, I found myself working for nearly 10 years at the Stanford Research Institute alongside a young man named John Lawrence who was busy with a strange system called, you guessed it, Grasper. <laughs> and John and Grasper turned out to have started out here at Indiana University as one of Dan's undergraduate students. So I, I was there with Grasper and, and John Lawrence and, and it was only actually nine years later that I figured out where it all came from. Dan came here to interview at Indiana in the spring of 1973 and was hired by Frank Prosser, joining a remarkable group of other recent arrivals that included David Wise, Stu Shapiro, George Epstein, Ben Schneiderman, and Mitch Wand. In 1974, Dan published the first edition of The Little Lisper, which he had started as a lark with a group of business students at the LBJ school one year when he taught them Lisp instead of Fortran. And, and they, they composed the whole group in, in a room, locked in a room on a blackboard in a week. The, whole, the, book, the book was basically done with this group of students. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, that, that got published. And in, uh, as Dan tells it, in 1976, uh, 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 Mitch Wand brought back, quote, from MIT, Sussman and Steele's scheme paper, which Dan says then changed his life. And in that same year, Dan and David Wise published their first paper on infinite objects, cons should not evaluate its arguments, originally titled, I believe, Cons the Magnificent, after a secret character in the first Little Lisper. That began the long and fruitful collaboration between Dan and David on the foundations of programming languages. And the rest is history. And we look forward eagerly now to hearing from uh, the, the people in this audience uh, more about Dan and the ideas in which he has participated. Dan himself has continued, as always, to be an inspirational teacher, an able facilitator for the growth of new ideas, a vital colleague, and a spark for the big bang of our intellectual universe. Thank you all for joining us, and let's all thank Dan Friedman for bringing us together here today. I turn the floor over to the session chair for the first group of talk. Well, hi, I'm Jerry Sussman. I've been